The Grand Opera House is one of the jewels in the catalogue of Frank Matcham theatres across the UK. To mark its 125th anniversary, the Grand Opera House Trust embarked on the biggest restoration project since the 1970s. It included everything from conserving the ornate plasterwork to replacing the seats and installing technical equipment fit for the 21st century. It also created an exhibition tracing the building's rich and colourful history. Well, the Grand Opera House was built in 1895 and it was last restored in the mid-1970s when it was rescued from demolition. It then underwent a period of restoration between the late 70s and reopened in 1980. So this restoration project is the most significant restorative project that we've had. So the project very much focused on the Frank Matcham Auditorium uh, built in 1895, restored in 1980 and the project stripped away all elements of the auditorium apart from the decorative features in, in the balcony and on the boxes. And then the auditorium was simply put back again. We had Ruth and her team did the most amazing job on the decorative features of the auditorium. It started about four, four and a half years ago when I was asked to come and do a survey and do a condition report of the decorative elements and the painted surface within the auditorium. Initially, the Frank Matcham scheme, the coloured scheme throughout the, the auditorium was actually quite light. That scheme was buried below about 15, 16 previous schemes. To take it back to the original scheme would be rather detrimental, so what we decided it was, it was better to clean and consolidate what was there, which is a scheme with Robert McKinstry. Colour was his thing, he really loved colour. His wife was uh, an artist, Sheriff McKinstry, who actually painted the six paintings that you see on the ceiling above. We had a team of up to 16 people coming in at different, uh, different days. Uh, the four original paintings from 1895, the corner paintings, these paintings depict the four elements, so earth, uh, fire, wind and water. And they're very, very beautiful. It's a very feminine ceiling, except you've got, you got a lot of female figurative form up there. Originally I chose a hand-picked team from colleagues of mine who I studied with uh, in, in England and in, uh, in Europe. Uh, however, due to the onset of COVID-19, the pandemic, uh, nobody could come over. So, so we had a very young team, a hand-picked team of local artists and craftspeople and, uh, and young people who we trained. So without them, this, would, this job wouldn't have happened. So I'm very, very proud of the, of the team. Working on this iconic building has just been the most incredible thing that probably I've ever done actually in my career as a conservator. It's a continual learning process working on buildings like this. You, you learn so much, you take away so much knowledge and you're enriched and nourished with what you've done and what you've learned. And then obviously through the next projects you'll be able to use that knowledge again. It is, there's no doubt that this is one of the most iconic buildings in Northern Ireland. So to have the opportunity to restore it, uh, my colleagues and I are very proud of that.